Welcome to the stage, NVIDIA founder and CEO, Jensen Wong. Hello, Las Vegas! Happy New Year! Welcome to CES! Well, we have about 15 keynotes worth of material to pack in here. I'm so happy to see all of you. You got 3,000 people in this auditorium. There's 2,000 people in the courtyard watching us. There's another 1,000 people apparently in the fourth floor where there were supposed to be NVIDIA show floors all watching this keynote. And of course, millions around the world are going to be watching this to kick off this new year. Well, every 10 to 15 years, the computer industry resets. A new platform shift happens. From mainframe to PC, PC to internet, internet to cloud, cloud to mobile. Each time, the world of applications target a new platform. That's why it's called a platform shift. You write new applications for a new computer. Except this time, there are two simultaneous platform shifts, in fact, happening at the same time. While we now move to AI, applications are now going to be built on top of AI. At first, people thought AIs are applications, and in fact, AIs are applications, but you're going to build applications on top of AIs. But in addition to that, how you run the software, how you develop the software, fundamentally changed. The entire five-layer stack of the computer industry is being reinvented. You no longer program the software, you train the software. You don't run it on CPUs, you run it on GPUs. And whereas applications were pre-recorded, pre-compiled, and run on your device, now applications understand the context and generate every single pixel, every single token, completely from scratch every single time. Computing has been fundamentally reshaped as a result of accelerated computing, as a result of artificial intelligence. Every single layer of that five-layer cake is now being re reinvented. Well, what that means is some $10 trillion or so of the last decade of computing is now being modernized to this new way of doing computing. What that means is hundreds of billions of dollars, a couple of hundred billion dollars in VC funding each year is going into modernize and inventing this new world. And what it means is a hundred trillion dollars of industry, several percent of which is R&D budget, is shifting over to artificial intelligence. People ask, where is the money coming from? That's where the money is coming from. The modernization of AI to AI, the shifting of R&D budgets from classical methods to now artificial intelligence methods enormous amounts of investments coming into this industry, which explains why we're so busy. And this last year was no difference. This last year was incredible. This last year, there's a slide coming. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't practice. It's the first keynote of the year. I hope it's your first keynote of the year. Otherwise, you, can be, you have been pretty busy. This is our first keynote of the year. We're going to get the spider webs out. And so... 2025 was an incredible year. It's just, it seems like everything was happening all at the same time, and it, in fact, it probably was. The first thing, of course, is scaling loss. In 2015, the first language model that I thought was really going to make a difference made a huge difference. It was called BERT. 2017, Transformers came. It wasn't until five years later, 2022, that chat GPT moment happened and it awakened the world to the possibilities of artificial intelligence. Something very important happened a year after that. The first O1 model from chat GPT, the first reasoning model, completely revolutionary, invented this idea called test time scaling, which is a very common sense, commonsensical thing. Not only did we pre-train a model to learn, we post-train it with our reinforcement learning so that it could learn skills. And now we also have test time scaling, which is another way of saying thinking. You think in real time. Each one of these phases of artificial intelligence requires an enormous amount of compute. And the computing law continued to scale 
large language models continue to get better. Meanwhile, another breakthrough happened, and this breakthrough happened in 2024. Agentic systems started to emerge. In 2025, it started to pervade, to, to uh, proliferate just about everywhere. Agentic models that have the ability to reason, look up information, do research, use tools, plan futures, simulate outcomes, all of a sudden started to solve very, very important problems. One of my favorite agentic models is called Cursor, which revolutionized the way we do software programming at NVIDIA. Agentic systems are going to really take off from here. Of course, there were other types of AI. We know that large language models isn't the only type of information. Wherever the universe has information, wherever the universe has structure, we could teach a large language model, a form of language model, to go understand that information, to understand its representation, and to turn that into an AI. One of the biggest, most important one is physical AI. AIs that understand the laws of nature. And then, of course, physical AIs is about AIs interacting with the world, but the world itself has information, encoded information, and that's called AI physics. AI that, in the case of physical AI, you have AI that interacts with the physical world, and you have AI physics, AI that understands the laws of physics. And then lastly, one of the most important things that happened last year, the advancement of open models. We can now know that AI is going to proliferate everywhere when open source, when open innovation, when innovation across every single company and every industry around the world is activated at the same time. Open models really took off last year. In fact, last year, we saw the advance of DeepSeek R1, the first open model that's a reasoning system. It caught the world by surprise, and it activated literally this entire movement. It's really, really exciting work. We're so happy with it. Now we have opening, open model systems all over the world of all different kinds, and we now know that open models have also reached the frontier. Still solidly is six months behind the frontier models, but every single six months, a new model is emerging, and these models are getting smarter and smarter. Because of that, you could see the number of downloads has exploded. The number of downloads is growing so fast because startups want to participate in the AI revolution. Large companies want to. Researchers want to. Students want to. Just about every single country wants to. How is it possible that intelligence, the digital form of intelligence, will leave anyone behind? And so open models has really revolutionized artificial intelligence last year. This entire industry is going to be reshaped as a result of that. Now, we had this inkling some time ago. You might have heard that several years ago, we just started to build and operate our own AI supercomputers. We call them DGX Clouds. A lot of people asked, are you going, to, in, going into the cloud business? The answer is no. We're building these DGX supercomputers for our own use. Well, it turns out, we have billions of dollars of supercomputers in operation so that we could develop our open models. I am so pleased with the work that we're doing. It is starting to attract attention all over the world and all over the industries because we are doing frontier AI model work in so many different domains. The work that we did in proteins, in digital biology, La Proteina, to be able to synthesize and generate proteins, open fold three to Understand the, understand the structure of proteins. EVO 2, how to understand and generate multiple proteins, otherwise the beginnings of cellular, cellular representation. Earth 2, AI that understands laws of physics. The work that we did with ForecastNet, the work that we did with Cordiv, really revolutionized the way that people are doing weather prediction. Nemotron, we have now doing groundbreaking work there the first hybrid transformer SSM model that's incredibly fast can, and therefore can think for a very long time or can think very quickly with that for not a very long time and produce very, very smart, intelligent answers. Nemotron 3 is groundbreaking work, and you can expect us to deliver other versions of Nemotron 3 in the near future. Cosmos, a frontier open world foundation model 
one that understands how the world works. Groot, a humanoid robotic system, articulation, mobility, locomotion, these models, these technologies are now being integrated, and in the, each one of these cases, open to the world. Frontier humanoid robotics models open to the world. And then today, we're going to talk a little bit about Alpamayo, the work that we've been doing in self-driving cars. Not only do we open source the models, we also open source the data that we use to train those models. Because that, in that way, only in that way, can you truly trust how the models came to be. We open source all the models. We help you make derivatives from them. We have a whole suite of libraries. We call the NEMO libraries, physics, li uh, uh, physics NEMO libraries, and the Clara NEMO libraries, each bio NEMO libraries. Each one of these libraries are life cycle management systems of AIs so that you could process the data, you could generate data, you could train the model, you could create the model, evaluate the model, guardrail the model, all the way to deploying the model. Each one of these libraries are incredibly complex and all of it is open sourced. And so now on top of this platform, NVIDIA is a frontier AI model builder. And we build it in a very special way. We build it completely in the open so that we can enable every company every industry, every country to be part of this AI revolution. I'm incredibly proud of the work that we're doing there. In fact, if you notice the, the charts, the chart shows that our contribution to this industry is bar none. And you're going to see us, in fact, continue to do that, if not accelerate. These models are also world class. All systems are down. This never happens in Santa Clara. Is it because of Las Vegas? <clears throat> Somebody must have won, won a jackpot outside. <clears throat> All systems are down. Okay. I think my system's still down, but that's okay. I, I, I've, I, uh, I'll make it up as I go. And so, so uh, not only are these models uh, frontier capable, not only are they open, they're also top the leaderboards. This is an area where we're very proud. They top leaderboards in intelligence. Uh, we have uh, uh, important models that are, understand multi-modality documents, otherwise known as PDFs. The most valuable content in the world are captured in PDFs. But there, it takes artificial intelligence to find out what's inside interpret what's inside, and help you read it. And so our PDF retrievers, our PDF parsers are world-class. Our speech recognition models, absolutely world-class. Our retrieval models, basically search, semantic search, AI search, the database engine of the modern AI era, world-class. So we're on top of leaderboards constantly. This is an area we're very proud of. And all of that is in service of your ability to build AI agents. This is really a groundbreaking area of development. You know, at first, when, Pete, when ChatGPT came out, people said, you know, uh, gosh, it, it, it produced really interesting results, but it hallucinated greatly. And the reason why it hallucinated, of course, it could memorize everything um, in the past, but it can't memorize everything in the future, in the current. And so it needs to be grounded in research. It has to do fundamental research before it an answers a question. The ability to reason about, do I have to do research? Do I have to use tools? How do I break up a problem into steps? Each one of these steps, something that, that the AI model knows how to do, and together it is able to compose it into a sequence of steps to perform something it's never done before, never been trained to do. This is the wonderful capability of reasoning. We, could, we, could be, we can encounter a circumstance we've never seen before and break it down into circumstances and knowledge or rules that we know how to do because we've experienced it in the past. And so the ability for AI models now to be able to reason, incredibly powerful. The reasoning capability of agents opened the doors to all of these different applications. We no longer have to train an AI model to know everything on day one, just as we don't have to know everything on day one, that we should be able to, in every circumstance, reason about how to solve that problem. Large language models has now made this fundamental leap, the ability to use reinforcement learning and chain of thought and you know, search and planning and all these different techniques in reinforcement learning has made it possible for us to 
had this basic capability and is also now completely open sourced. But the thing that's really terrific is another breakthrough that happened. And the first time I saw it was with Ervin's Perplexity, Perplexity, the search company, the AI search company, really fan, really innovative company. And the first time I realized they were using multiple models at the same time, I thought it was completely genius. Of course we would do that. Of course an AI would also call upon all of the world's great AIs to solve the problem it wants to solve at any part of the reasoning chain. And this is the reason why AIs are really multi-modal, meaning they understand speech and images and text and videos and 3D graphics and proteins. It's multi-modal. It's also multi-model, meaning that it should be able to use any model that best fits the task. It is multi-cloud by definition, therefore, because these AI models are sitting in all these different places, and it also is hybrid cloud. Because if you're an enterprise company or you built a robot or whatever that device is, sometimes it's at the edge, sometimes a radio cell tower, maybe sometimes it's in an enterprise or maybe it's a place where a hospital where you need to have the, the data in real time right next to you. Whatever those applications are, we know now this is what an AI application looks like in the future. Or another way to think about that, because future applications are built on AIs, this is the basic framework of future applications. This basic framework, this basic structure of agentic AIs that could do the things that I'm talking about, that is multi-model, has now turbocharged AI startups of all kinds. And now you can also, because of the, all of the open models and all the tools that we provided you, you could also customize your AIs to teach your AI skills that nobody else is teaching. Nobody else is causing their AI to become intelligent or smart in that way. You could do it for yourself. And that's the work that we do with Nemotron, Nemo, and all of the things that we do with open models is intended to do. You put a smart router in front of it, and that router is essentially a manager that decides which one of the tasks, based on the intention of the prompts that you give it, which one of the models is best fit for that application, for that solving that problem. Okay? So now, when you think about this architecture, what do you have? When you think about this architecture, all of a sudden you have an AI that's on the one hand completely customizable by you, something that you could teach to do your own very skills for your company, something that's domain secret, something where you have deep domain expertise. Maybe you've got all of the data that you need to train that AI model. On the other hand, your AI is always at the frontier by definition. You're always at the frontier on the one hand, you're always customized on the other hand, and it should just run. And so we thought we would make the simplest of examples to make it available to you. This entire framework we call a bl blueprint. And we have blueprints that are integrated into enterprise SaaS platforms all over the world, and we're really pleased with the progress. But what we do is show you a, a short example of something that anybody can do.